How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video. And in today's video, we are going to be starting a series, quite long series, uh, or quite long, quite a long series. So for those that have been living under a rock, a lot of sh has been going down in the United States in the past couple days. And uh, yeah, the US Capitol building was raided by a group of uh, right-wing extremists, I guess you would call it that, uh, terrorists, do it, you name it what you want it. Uh, the U.S. Capitol building was taken over by non-government people. And the result of this is a giant, giant information-grabbing campaign going on right now by law enforcement and other individuals. Um, and I'm taking this time to kind of teach you all how to properly gather data, uh, analyze data, and then present data in a usable format. Uh, so this is going to be a multi-part series um, because there's just so much to it. I can't cover all of this in one video. And this is going to be a, a drawn out process because it's just going to take so long. There's planned events coming up in the future that, you know, might interfere or might deprioritize what's going on today. I hate to speculate, but, uh, uh, you know, it's really hard to say what's going to happen. I mean, the U.S. Capitol building was taken over not too long ago. So the first thing that we're going to be doing today in this in this multi-part series, in this video, we are going to be gathering data. I'm going to be showing you how to download data, how to properly pull data down. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of our main focus in this video. So it's going to be finding data, saving data, and then storing data. We're also going to be doing things like, uh, hopefully I can get some time uh, to find a good software to uh, do something I actually just thought of, and that is hashing data. Uh, the reason why you want to do that, well, I'll, I'll get into all of this in a bit. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to find giant data dumps. So one thing that you want to do when you're doing bulk analysis like this is to not reinvent the wheel. If people have done the legwork already and gathered information already, take that data and then take it and put it onto your own systems uh, because you never know you can't control data that people, other people have, so you want to control the data. So you want to have your own copy of the data physical to you and in a separate location. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to find data dumps. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to define what is valuable to us. Um, example uh, from this event that happened in DC, we're not going to be searching MySpace for content, obviously. So we want to define what we want to search for. We're going to be on Parler. We're going to be on Twitter. We're going to be on these various random websites, 8con.top. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. We want to define what we want to get um, from which sites. That sounded weird. We want to define the sites we want to go to, and then we want to define the kind of data that we want to grab. Um, we don't care about memes, as funny as they are or how horrible they could be on some of these sites. We want to get pictures of the event. We want to get videos from the event. Um, and we just want to consume that data and, and then, again, store it. Um, and that's our main objective in this video. Get all the data, every possible piece of data point that we can grab. Um, and then storing the data. So I'll be showing you how to store data at a NAS at home. If you can, you know, if you have a NAS at home, how to use Google Drive. Um, and then we're going to be hashing stuff as well just to maintain the integrity of the content. Because um, anytime you're dealing with anything that can involve law enforcement and court cases, the hash is what you need to have maintained. So we're going to be hashing um, pretty much all of our files. That's going to take a long time, um, but that's okay. You want to get the hash and you want to get those hashes in a manifest meaning it's its own separate text document saying this file name under this folder creates this SHA-256 hash, and then you're just going to put that alongside of everything. And then you do what you want with that data, zip it up, do whatever. So anyways, let's go ahead and find some data. Okay, so uh, the first thing that we want to do is gather information and gather data that's already been collected, and we want to get a copy of that local to us. Um, and like I explained in the beginning, uh, you want to control as much data as possible. You do not want to rely on anyone else. So even if you believe the copies that are online are going to be maintained, don't always trust that. It always happens. Servers go down. Things get DDoSed. I mean, the list goes on and on. So at least if you get a physical copy, you can control that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get copies 
of known dumps and there there have already been initiatives online people do, started doing this on reddit so we're, what we're going to go ahead and do is take those dumps and make copies ourselves we have the uh reddit uh r slash data hoarder and they have a pretty good list going on right now so they, they already have a couple archives going on right now. So we have torrent files, we have direct hosting, um, and such like that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to you nuzzles uwu, and they actually have more. So what we're going to go ahead and do is download all of this content. Now for stuff like this, it's a little difficult to just download everything in bulk instead of, you know, right clicking and saving. You can use Linux in this case, which I'll show you a very simple one liner in Linux to just download everything. It's very, very easy to do. And all you're gonna type in is wget, and then you're gonna point to the directory you wanna go to. So this January you know, 6th uh, link right here. And we're gonna go back to Ubuntu paste that into there and then we're going to do tac tac no parent let me just make sure you can yeah no parent and then tac r and what that's going to do is it's just going to download everything in this folder and then maintain the directories so it's going to download everything um there's more in here that i need to download the snapchat and all that but you could download all of that and then what I do from there is I keep that onto my NAS. So you can point um, your, you know, if you're running wget, you can point that to a directory. So wherever you mount your, um, you know, NAS, you could just, you know, wget all that and then slash uh, MNT or wherever you put it um, and then just download it there. And then from there, what I do is um, once it's on my NAS, I can navigate through the contents uh, using Windows File Explorer. So I like type in JPEG. Then what I can do is go to kind and then I go to picture. And just remove that and it's gonna give me all the photos. So from this Intel X FTP download, which is another repository that I downloaded from, uh, which I'll get into how to download FTP in a sec. Um, so I got like all the photos right here. Uh, for photos, I upload it to Google Drive um, as well with everything else, but I also store it in Amazon Photos. Amazon Photos is free to have unlimited files or unlimited photo storage um, if you have Amazon Prime, as well as um, image recognition. So it's like raw files. You can put raw files in there, full size, all that stuff, and then you could get image recognition. So if I click on like the little eye right there, well, I'm not signed in, but it'll say like people and it'll highlight faces. And then you can build a profile on that person. So anytime that person's face shows up again in any other photo, we'll put it into its own album. So great way to handle data in mass. So for FTP stuff, that one's fairly easy again. Um, there was uh, the Intel X FTP server and I was just using FileZilla for that. So very, very simple to use. So FileZilla is right here. So FTP dot intelx.io the username was capital and i just log in so on the left hand side over here you have your own local repo and then on the right hand side you have the repo of Intel X. and then all you have to do to move files over is if you wanted to copy the entire repo is you click here and you hit control a oops hit control a and then you just drag it to the folder you want to and it's just going to start downloading simple as that right Okay, so now that we got all of that um, out of the way, kind of did everything bass backwards. Uh, so we got the data, well, actually no, we, so we got the data dumps, cool. So now it's time to start grabbing native content, meaning it's content that's not in data dumps. Um, so what I use is TweetDeck. Um, there's, all, there's other websites that these people in this particular case use. So parlor, 8con.top, um, you want to start grabbing media. So I, I'm going to start off the easiest place first, which is Twitter. So Twitter has different filters you can use. Uh, you can filter just by media, photos, or videos only. So while the event was going on, I actually had this filter uh, going right here. So I saw things happening right when they happened. So the filter that I used or the search I used is near Washington. So this is going to be the city. So Washington, the city 
within 10 kilometers. So that means that any tweets originating geolocated in the city of Washington within 10 kilometers. So it's not tweets mentioning Washington or anything like that. It's tweets originating from Washington. Filter native video. So this is going to be capturing any video that was uploaded to Twitter, um, whether through it's the negative Twitter video app, Vine. Um, and then there's like other ones as well. I can't think of the top of my head. Periscope, I think. Um, and then this very last one. So it's minus filter verified. So you can play around with this. Uh, filter verified will only show you tweets matching everything before that from verified accounts. That's going to get you more um, accurate data, I guess you'd say. But it's not going to be the most up to date, most likely. And it's, yeah, it's going to be good data, but it's not going to be like instant data. Whereas if you put, put minus filter verified, same thing, but you're not going to get any tweets from people that are not verified. So it's going to be a lot more memes. It's going to be a lot more reposts. Um, but you can typically get faster data, more up-to-date stuff right away because it's just a, a giant group of you know more people. So what I, what I would do is I would put this filter and um, with the minus filter verified and then the filter verified right next to each other on TweetDeck, which is what I use. Um, so I would see the stream and they would be separated. So they're not like mixed into each other. Next up next to that is video.parlor.com. So parlor.com is the main social media application that the, this particular crowd uses. And I say that and I might sound like a total dweeb. It might not be, but parlor has a lot of content on there. So, um, I've noticed that the URLs used uh, for their videos and images are pretty unique. So like video.parlor.com is the hosting subdomain for videos on Parlor, and then images.parlor.com, and then I think it's like image-tag-cdn.parlor.com are the two ones. Yeah, so image CDN. So I'll, I'll put that here. So, and again, this is this is where you'd be going through and you'd be downloading all this content. Um, there there is a, one tool that I use, especially on like the video or the Parlor video one. So I'll show you real quick. So like I'll open this up in a new tab. This will take me to the this video right here. So this might be something that I want to download, which I'm actually going to do. So I have this add-on called uh, Download Them All. And you just click on that, hit Download Them All. And this little pop-up will show up right here. And it'll say like, what do you want to download? Because it'll have like all these links right here. You'll see on my screen. It'll be like pictures and all that stuff but you want to filter it down to like only images or only JPEG files or only videos. So in this case, we have this one uh, MP4 file and we're just going to hit download and it's going to download, make the little ding. There's the file right there. And from there, I will throw that into my NAS under an uncategorized um, folder yet to be sorted out. And uh, I just upload it to the cloud. All I care about right now is just gathering, 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 sorting it out, identifying people comes later. All I care about right now is gathering, gathering, gathering. So I got that information. So we're good. We're good. Um, there's other sites. If you have this, uh, you know, tweet deck thing pulled up, you'll definitely see those sites referenced on Twitter a lot. Um, if you get involved in discord channels, another great resource, um, for content as well. So now Getting involved with all this, depending on what you're dealing with, especially with like private um, or yeah, private like Facebook groups and such like that, which I'm not even talking about Facebook at all at, at this point, because um, it's, it's, it's kind of the same technique. Uh, you could just Google like Facebook video downloader, YouTube video downloader. I think like keep dot or keep vid is kind of the main one for uh, YouTube, Twitch, Periscope and such. Um, and you just go on all these sites. Now, sometimes some communities will require some vetting, which will require you to have a, a pretty well-tailored sock puppet. Now, I've never really talked about sock puppets on my channel, um, but basically it's a persona that you use online to kind of blend in. I do have my own sock puppets, but I'm more of a reconnaissance type sock puppet. So I just, I, I'm, it's a sock puppet in the fact that it, it's required for me to have an account to be a part of the
the community, but I'm not doing anything. I'm not commentating. I'm not interacting or doing anything like that. I'm simply just, I have that sock puppet there to gather intelligence. Um, there are more interactive sock puppets and a technique that I know works the best is Chrome personas, uh, like Google Chrome personas. It will basically save cash cookies, all that stuff for each individual sock puppet. And I can't really explain it, but you can like have like, uh, tagged a for your Facebook sock puppet in this, you know, geographic region. And then you can click over to a different, um, persona and stuff like that. So it's pretty helpful uh, for managing sock puppets. Um, another thing you want to do with sock puppets, it might be a little too late for you now, um, for, for all this, it might not be for parlor is you want to do what's called cooking your sock puppet or baking your sock puppet, which basically means to make it look more legitimate. The whole purpose of a sock puppet is to build a reputation um, and to make people believe you're legit. A good example of this in the security community is Swift on security. No one knows who the f that is, at least people I know, um, but they've somehow made themselves look legit. I don't know a better way to put it. Um, so anyways, we got all that information. Now, the next thing that I would honestly start doing, and I haven't started yet, I mean, if I do find something, I'll put a link to it down below is I want to start hashing. So you could do, you can multitask at the same time. I, it might not be super duper important for, you know, if you're doing recon and intel, intelligence gathering on people, but there's going to be some lawyer out there that is going to bless your heart, basically say, bless your heart for doing that for me. Uh, and that's starting to hash files. Um, you want to hash those files and build a manifest of all the files and, you know, a directory. It's like, here's all the files. Like, let's, let's go here. So if we go to collection two, for example, mm -hmm. um, you go to collection two and then we hash all these files and it'll be like file name and then the SHA-256 hash right next to it. Reason for that is at least in my, my collection, I know that if there's any tampering with the video, any sort of tampering, that hash will be a completely different hash. Uh, hash collision is very, 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 very unlikely, at least at the time of this video for SHA-256. So, um, yeah, that's a recon phase. It's literally just going in, getting as much information as possible. Don't even worry about duplicates. Just worry about that later. Um, just consume as much data as possible. Um, if you can get a NAS, I'll put a link to what I have down below. I have about... Uh, six terabytes worth of local storage for myself. So it should be plenty for just this one event. Um, but I'll put a link to my NAS down below. Um, and then a Google Drive as well as a off-prem backup, which costs about 10 bucks a month. Um, so anyways, that is it for this video. If y'all enjoy content like this, please hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button with the bell notification. Like I said, this is going to be a multi-part series. Um, this is simply recon, not even recon, just information gathering. That's all it is. Just gather as much information as possible. So anyways, uh, y'all take care. Go ahead.